Okay, so we are on the eighth tab, and the eighth tab is solving and graphing quadratics. Solving and graphing quadratics. So there's lots of ways to solve quadratics. So there's some easier ways um, that don't work all the time, but the really easy way, one of them is solving by factoring. Now, whenever you do solving by factoring, it only works if it's factorable. So that's the only problem about solving by factoring. So like, for example, if it said x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So what times what is x squared? x times x. What times together give me 8? That subtracts together to give me 2. 2 and 4. The signs are different, and the bigger product is negative. So the 4 is negative, and the 2 is positive. So the zero product property says that if I times two things together and get zero, then one or both of those things has to equal zero. So x plus 2 could equal zero, and x minus 4 could equal zero. So minus 2 minus 2, x is negative 2, and plus 4 plus 4, x is 4. So in this case, our solutions are negative 2 and 4. Also, if it was something like, um, let's say, 0 equals x squared minus 3x, and at first you might think that's not factorable, but don't forget, the first step to factoring is look for a GCF. So you would just take out an x, and then you'd still have x equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0, and so your answers are 0 and 3. So, and these only works if it's factorable. All right, next one. Uh, let's do um, solving by the square root method. Now, the only time you can use the square root method is when it's square rootable or if b equals 0. Okay, so if it's square rootable, like for example, if it said x plus 7 quantity squared equals 25. So you could just square root both sides and you get x plus 7 equals plus or minus, and you do know the square root of 25, which is 5, then minus 7 from both sides, so x equals negative 7 plus or minus 5. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, and negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. Now, of course, we're going super fast because this is a review and you're just making yourself a little review booklet. And when we did this in class, obviously, we took a lot more time. Um, but those would be your two values. Another one would be like if I had something like n squared minus 25 equals 0. So if you were going to do the ABC values, A is 1, B is 0, and C is negative 25. And you might remember, oh, yeah, if B is 0, I can use the square root method. So you just add 25 to both sides, and then you square root both sides. So n equals, and don't forget plus or minus, and the positive or negative square root of 25 is 5. So my two answers are 5 and negative 5. And order doesn't matter in a set, but usually they put the little one first. So those two are the greatest if the, you can do it. This one's only if it's factorable, and this one's only if it's something squared to start with, or the B value is zero. Now, the one everybody loves is the quadratic formula. So I know all of you are thinking, oh, let's sing. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna sing. But the quadratic formula. So obviously, the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, well, I said I wasn't going to sing, and I did it anyway. Oh, well. Anyway, so an example would be x squared minus 2x minus 8 again. So we're going to pick one that's pretty an easy one. Now, um, if it's not factorable, though, the quadratic formula always works. But anyway, so a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 8. So then you plug that into the formula, and you get x equals the opposite of b, and b is negative 2, so 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, remember, b squared is an, always a positive value. So negative 2, quantity squared, is 4, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 
Now, here's where the mistakes happen. All right, so this minus is permanent, and then there's another negative. Now, remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So 4 times 1 times 8 is 32, and then you're adding that to 4. So you get 36 all over 2. So you get 2 plus or minus 6, because the square root of 36 is 6, over 2. So 2 plus 6 is 8, divided by 2 is 4, and 2 minus 6 is negative 4, divided by 2 is negative 2. So we get our two answers. We actually knew that was going to happen because I picked the same one here. So you better get the same answers. But if it was not factorable, this would work, and our answers would have square roots in them because they'd be irrational solutions. So um, let's see. And then the last way is solving by completing the square. Now, the only time I would use solving by completing the square is honestly is if the a value is 1 and the b is even. If that happens, completing the square is going to be super easy, but if that doesn't happen, I'd probably pick quadratic formula. But let's make do one anyway. So let's say I had 2x squared minus 4x minus 16. Now remember, if I'm going to use completing the square, this has to be 1. So I'm going to go ahead and divide through by 2. So I get x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Now the a value is 1, so I can complete the square. So I first move the number. So x squared minus 2x equals 8. I put a plus blank and a plus blank. Now remember, when I complete the square, I take the b value and I times it by a half and I square it. So the b value is negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1 and squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So on this side, 8 plus 1 is 9. And over here, the reason why you complete the square is to factor to something squared. If it doesn't factor to something squared, you did it wrong. So x, what times itself is 1? 1, and it's that sign. So then you just do what you did now from the square root method. Square root both sides, so x minus 1 equals plus or minus. And do I know the square root of 9? Yes, it's 3. So then add 1, add 1. So x equals 1 plus or minus 3. So 1 plus 3 is 4, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And we get the same answers again. So in vertex... All right, so whenever we're doing this, if I have the standard form of a quadratic, equation, I have, it would be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a is the thing in front of x squared, b is the thing in front of x, and c is the constant alone. Remember, c is always the y-intercept. Okay, so also we talked about it in the last video, but vertex form is that where h comma k is the vertex. So both of those are very helpful. Um, and you can derive this by uh, using the steps of completing the square. And we did that in class, but we're not going to worry about it right now. So for the first thing you would want to do when you do this is you want to find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is that symmetrical line that goes through the middle of your parabola that it opens up or down around. And the formula is x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So it's the easy part of the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b over 2a. Because this thing helps us do the shift and all that. But this just gives us that um, axis of symmetry. So then where it crosses the x-axis are the solutions or the zeros or the roots. So say I have a graph... And let's just, um, I don't know, let's make an axis of symmetry at x equals 2. And let's see. Let's make the vertex at 2, negative 4. So that's the vertex. Uh, the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. All right, and then we have the parabola opening up. 
And let's see, let's, it really doesn't matter. We're just making one up, but it goes like this. And then it goes like this. And these are the roots or so they're called roots, solutions, or zeros. And then this is obviously your x-axis and your y-axis. And remember, this value and this value, these from here to here is equal to here to here. And also, if you take those two solutions and you add them up and divide by two, that'll give you that. So that's a good double check. And remember, if the A value is positive, it opens up. So in my example, the A value is positive. And if the A value is negative, it opens down like a little frowny face. All right, so whenever you do a vertical motion question, so the height, which usually they call that H of T, equals A, that's T squared, plus B T plus C. So this is the Y intercept. So this is where it fell from or where it got kicked from. So if, there, if the C value is zero, it won't be there at all because it got kicked off of the ground. If this is like 100, that means it started at 100 and then went down. Okay, and this right here is the height. And this tells you whether it opens up or down. And then this tells you how fast it's going or its speed or its velocity. So um, again, if I have a parabola in vertical motion, let's say it starts here and it goes like this and then it hits the ground going right there. So then here is my axis of symmetry. So remember that's x equals the opposite of b over 2a. That's my y-intercept. It's also the C value, where it started from. And this is the time when X equals, uh, excuse me, when Y equals zero. So this is the time, and it'll be like time comma zero. So how long it takes to hit the ground. So the X coordinate of the vertex is when it gets to its highest point. And the Y coordinate is how high it gets. So it's its highest height. So the Y coordinate of the vertex is its maximum height. And remember, if it opens down, it has a maximum. If it opens up, it has a minimum. Okay, and one more thing. Whenever it asks when will it hit the ground or how long does it take to hit the ground, so if it asks hit the ground, always put in zero for H of T. And then 99.9% of the time, I'd use the quadratic formula to solve. So you just set the equation equal to zero and then use the quadratic formula and you can find when it hits the ground. The first value is gonna be before it went. If in this case, that first value be over here negative because it's before you launched it. Um, but if you went ground to ground, like it went from here to here, this is gonna be zero and then that's gonna be the other one. And that's it.